Hello and welcome to the start of a mini series covering how to make a buff system for your games. In this episode we're going to go through the process of creating and setting up our buff system and explain how it's going to work. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up the various actors that we need for our system. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder to store our system in, buff system. And this is going to comprise of a couple of things. The first thing we need to make is the actor itself, that the thing we walk into in the world. And this is going to become a blueprint class and it'll be an actor base class here. Now what this will be, it will be a buff and a debuff. So we're going to do buff, debuff, underscore base. And let's say this is going to be the overall one for both of them. And we're going to do a child of this one and that be buff base. And then another child of the same one, buff debuff base, of a child to create a debuff base. Okay, so now we've got one of each. So what we we'll do is put the common elements into the parent actor. Uh, that way I don't have to duplicate my work in either one. So I'm going to go to my buff debuff base. Open it up. And in here we're going to add in a Niagara particle system. And we're also going to add in a sphere collision component. So the sphere collision will act as our collider. So when we overlap it, we'll award the player the buff or debuff. And the Niagara is a visual that will have assigned to the effect. Hit compile and save. Close that. Okay, so now we've got that done. We are going to now create the buff effect class. So the way it works is you have a buff ability, which are these things here, and your various children of those. And then when you collide with those, they will spawn the effect they've been assigned, and that effect will be attached to the player. And that effect will then reward the player with the buff or punish them with a debuff a certain, certain amount of time before it disappears and moves itself from the player. So we're going to create a new folder for our effects. Uh, whilst we're here, we'll make a new folder for our buffs and another one for our debuffs. Buffs. Or debuffs. And we'll put my buff base in my buff folder. Debuff base in my debuff folder. And then we're going to my effects folder. And in the effects here, we're going to go to blueprint class and choose actor. And this will be buff debuff effect. Okay, so we'll use the same one for both. Now with these, we do want to take into account of how long they're going to last for in particular. Now, we don't have to worry about too much because the actor has already got something in uh, built in which handles the lifetime of the actor. So that is handled. What we do need to do is handle what the effect is going to be. So let's make an example chart of this. I'm going to right click on my buff debuff effect, create a child class in this, and we'll have a buff and we'll do speed buff. Okay, so buff speed. And the way these work is that once we collide with the actual actor in a scene, it's going to spawn this in and attach it to the player. That way we know who it's affecting. And it's a similar sort of effect as well. If you were to rather than have it in the world, but be spawned by a player casting a spell, you cast a spell and then you spawn the effect and attach it to whoever you've targeted. So in here, we're going to say to our event graph here on begin play, we want to get the owner who this is attached to. So we're going to do attach parent actor. And this will go up the chain to it finds a new actor, which will be a player character that we've attached this to. And then from there, I want to cast to character. And then from there, I'm going to get the character movement component. Uh, get character, just not get, sorry, just to do, should be at the bottom. Oh, don't do comp. There you go. Get character movement. There we are. And in here, we'll do set max walk speed. And we'll increase that by double. In this 1200. 
Okay, so as I said, there's a built-in lifetime tool in all actors. You'll find it in the class default. So if you just search for life, you'll see initial lifespan so zero. We're going to set the default of this in the parent one, but these all by default will last for five seconds. Then we can tweak that per buff debuff. Change that to five here. And that's in the parent class. If I go back now to my buff speed, we should see that that change has taken an effect here too. Okay. So when this is removed from the uh, the game, we need to return our character's movement speed back. So I'm going to do end play. And basically do the exact same thing. Like so. And change it back to 600. Now, if you want this buff to also have a visual effect on the player or do anything like that, it's here where you do it. So you'd have components such as Niagara systems or audio or whatever you want in here that handles it. Because it's attached to the player, it will follow them wherever they go. But we'll leave that for now here. That's our buff effect done. Close that. Now let's make the buff that is going to be the one that gives us this effect. I'm going to go to my buff system, go to the buffs folder, and on buff base, I'm going to right click and create child blueprint class. And in here, we're going to do speed, uh, in, uh, we'll do increase speed. Buff. Okay, so let's design what this one looks like. We've got the sphere, and we've got the Niagara system. Now, I've brought in these free pack on the marketplace to use. Um, you can help yourself to it. It is on the marketplace in the permanently free collection. In there, we've got these pickups here. So let's, let's see what this one looks like. Close. And it compiles the shaders. Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. What ones have we got in there? Oh, there we go. Look what this Thunderbolts looking thing. That'd be quite a good one for this. Okay. Um, going to hit compile and save that. So what I'm going to do on the increased speed buff here, I need to know which buff I want to give this thing. So I'm going to go to the parent class list. So not on the actual buff here, but going to the parent class. And in fact, not just buff base, but the buff, a uh, debuff base. We go in here. So we're just going to assign the buff debuff base its effect. So we go to the variables down here. Variable, and we'll call this one buff effect. And the type for this would be a buff debuff effect. But you want it to be a class reference. Buff, let's do it again. Debuff effect class reference. Compile and save that. So now, if we go to our increased speed buff, go to its class defaults, we should be able to, over here on the right hand side, choose what buff effect we want to give this. We can see here, I've got buff or speed. So, so all these buffs will do the same thing. They're going to spawn in there this class and attach it to whoever walked into it. Let's go to the debuff debuff base and go on actor begin overlap. We're going to check if the other actor is of the player class. So we're going to go other actor, get class, and I'll well, tell you what. Actually, we'll, what we do is we'll do other actor is equal to get player character player character and put that into a branch there there we go uh, and if that's the case then we're going to do spawn actor from class to choose the buff effect and the spawn transform we can just split it doesn't really matter what we're going to do is just attach it to us so return value, I'm going to take out and do attach actor to actor. And parent actor is going to be the get player character here. And this is going to be snap to target. This could be important if you've got buffs that are location based buffs. So ones that may want to say heal nearby allies or damage nearby enemies, whatever. Um, so snap to target would be necessary for this. Hit compile and save that. Okay, and that is it. It's going to attach that and be done.
So we're going to hit save. Oh, and actually, let's before we finish that, let's destroy this actor. So we can't keep picking it up over and over and over again. So let's now put that into our scene here. I'm going to go in and drag in my increased speed buff. There it is with its particle uh, Niagara system. Let's now go in and there's our normal walking speed. And if I run into our deep our buff here, you'll see nothing is actually happening. Okay, so this is a common problem that you'll find whenever you're dealing with the begin play and spawning actors in regarding the begin play. So what actually is happening here is this buff um, is spawning in the actor here. Okay. But this actor is not being attached until after it's been created. So the buff debuff effect is coming in too early. Um, so if I go into my uh, buff speed here, let's begin play. It's actually happening before I've even had a chance to attach it. So this is not going to work. So to get around that, all we have to do is put a delay in between these two. So let's just drag that out, put a delay. And you can leave it 0.2, there should be plenty of time for the computer to get onto the next node. So we'll hit compile and let's go and take a look at this now. So running normal running speed. Yeah. And now we've got the fast running speed. And after five seconds it should disappear. I should return back to my normal speed. Okay. Okay. And that is the buff effect. And there you go, we've now explained how the buff system is going to work and we've done a lot of the legwork to set it up to make it work for us. In the next episode, we're going to go through the process of adding it to our screen in the form of a HUD widget. In that next episode, you can find it over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all my videos are available to all my patrons and YouTube members early before everyone else. Massive thank you to everyone supporting me and the channel. This wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again so, so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.